and in another message which encourages people to reflect upon the signs of the Creator in the universe and in themselves, the Creator says, We will show them our signs in the universe and in their own selves until it becomes manifest to them that this is the truth. Bring 12 marbles, number them from 1 to 12, and then put them in a bag, shake the bag and close your eyes and pull out marble number 1. And then pull them all out one by one. Do you know what is the chance of doing that? You need to try about 479 million times to pull them all out in order. So if pulling 12 marbles in order is that impossible, what do you think the chances of having this entire universe come by chance with all its systems, with all the precision, the, the synchronizations, the variations, the infinite numerations? People think that this can come by chance. Fred Hoyle, a famous English mathematician, expressed the impossibility of formation of higher life forms without a creator. The chance that higher life forms might have emerged by chance is comparable with the chance that a tornado sweeping through a junkyard might assemble a Boeing 747 from materials therein. Every evolutionist attempt in the 20th century to account for the origin of life have ended in failure. Jeffrey Bada, a professor of geochemistry and a leading advocate of the theory of evolution, confesses this fact in the February 1998 issue of Earth, one of the leading periodicals of evolutionist literature. Today, as we leave the 20th century, we still face the biggest problem that we had when we entered the 20th century. How did life originate on Earth? After lengthy studies and several experiments, the famous French biologist Louis Pasteur refuted the foundation that lays ground for the theory of evolution. Can matter organize itself? No. Today there is no circumstance known under which one could affirm that microscopic beings have come into the world without parents resembling themselves. Muslims believe that every human being is born clean and pure, ready to submit by nature, which means no one will come on the day of judgment and say, O oh God, you cannot punish me because you are the one who created me bad by nature. One of the wonderful things about Islam is that we do not believe that human beings were born into some type of original sin or curse. We believe, in fact, that the creator of all, God Almighty, has written on the hard drive of every human being the ability to know him, to draw closer to him, and to worship and serve him. Thus, instead of original sin, we as Muslims believe in original goodness. Muslims believe that people are born without any inherited sin. Although we believe that we are from Adam, and Adam is from Earth, we also believe that if someone has committed a sin or a crime, he should carry the sin on his own shoulder on the Day of Judgment, not on the shoulder of his sons or his grandsons or his great-great-grandsons. Muslims believe that faith is an action of the heart and that no one can force anyone to change his faith. The Quran addresses this in chapter 2. Let there be no compulsion in religion. The reason why this verse was revealed to Prophet Muhammad is that before Islam there were some ignorant people who hated to have newborn baby girls and some wanted their boys to live. 
So they made oaths to God that if they were granted boys, they would make them Jews. So there happened to be that there were a generation of idolaters whose sons were Jewish. Some of those parents became Muslims and then they started to put pressure on the Jewish youth to convert them from Judaism to Islam. The Jewish youth were defended in the Quran with this verse, let there be no compulsion in religion, leave them alone. Why force anyone to become Muslim? No one can force anyone to become Muslim simply because Islam is an action of the heart. Muslims believe that there is no supremacy based on color, race, or sex. God says in the Quran, Surely the most honored of you in the sight of God are the most righteous of you. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said that all people in the sight of God are as equal as the teeth of a comb. There is no privilege for an Arab over a non-Arab, nor for a white over a black, except according to their level of piety and righteousness. So it is piety and righteousness, not racism. This means that Muslims believe that God Almighty never chose the Arabs to be the chosen people, or the Jews, or any people because of their race. Muslims believe in six main beliefs. Almighty God, Allah, the angels of God, the scriptures of God, the messengers of God, the day of resurrection, the divine destiny. Muslims believe that there is no deity worthy of worship except Allah. And this shouldn't be offensive for anybody, simply because the word Allah is an Arabic word that means the one true God. The word God is not an accurate translation for the word Allah because you can have derivatives from the word God. There's a goddess, false gods, Roman gods, Greek gods, true God, Godfather. But the word Allah means the one true God. Arab Christians and Jews worship Allah as well. In the very first page of the Arabic Christian Bible, the human eye reads the word Allah six times in the first paragraph of Genesis alone, 17 times in the whole page, and hundreds of times all through the Bible. There is no God except Allah. Muslims believe in the absolute uniqueness and awesome nature of our Creator. That means that He is not like His creation in His attributes, in His actions, or His essence. For if the Creator was like creation, He would not be worthy of worship. But in Islam, we believe that God, Allah, is absolutely unique and far removed from any likeness of His creation. For that reason, we do not draw pictures of Him or try to depict Him. We also believe that Allah, God Almighty, is the Creator of all. He's so merciful. He provides for everything that exists, from the birds in the heavens to the fish in the streams to young children who play in the streets. He's so merciful that he even provides for those who deny his very existence. Like Karl Marx, for example. Could you imagine at the end of the month if Karl Marx received a bill for his oxygen that said, look Karl, if you don't pay this bill, we're cutting you off. But no, Allah, God Almighty, is so merciful that even those who deny him are recipients of his magnificent and awesome mercy. Muslims believe that Allah is unique. 
There is nothing like unto him. He is the creator of man and the creator of animals, so he does not look like any man, nor any animal, nor any plant. He is truly beyond imagination.